Tonight, gaming on Apple TV, uh, Microsoft making mad stacks and replacing soldiers with robots. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, show nine for January 23rd, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by 99designs, the world's largest graphic design marketplace. 99designs connects businesses seeking quality, affordable designs with a community of more than 270,000 graphic designers. Visit 99designs.com slash TN2 to receive a free power pack upgrade valued at $99. I'm Jason Howell. Thank you for, uh, for watching today. Let's get right to the tech feed. Sources are telling 9to5Mac that an Apple TV refresh is coming for the first half of this year. The new Apple TV may feature a new user interface based on Apple's iOS mobile operating system and even games, according to the report. The blog sources say games will be downloadable to the Apple TV itself and will not require a mobile device, so likely a game store of some sort. Also interesting is the possibility of Bluetooth controllers that can work with the new Apple TV. Now, if we could just get those rumored larger screened iPhones as second screens for gaming on the Apple TV, I'm sure Apple fan gamers would be very happy. Today, Microsoft announced better than expected earnings, raking in $24.52 billion for the final quarter of last year. That's a 14% rise over the same quarter in the previous year, more than analysts were expecting. Microsoft has a lot to celebrate with the success of the Xbox One and launch of the Surface and Surface Pro 2. Revenue for the tablets more than doubled from Q1 to Q2 with $400 million all the way up to $894 million. With CEO Steve Ballmer leaving soon, the next CEO is going to have some big money bags to fill. And Android is free, right? Well, sort of. The operating system is free to device makers, but to gain access to services like Google Maps, Google Play, and of course Google Search, a manufacturer has to get their devices cleared through something called the Google Mobile Services License. Today, the Guardian newspaper reported that Google charges for this access about $75,000 per 100,000 devices, or 75 cents per device. That's not a lot by Google's standards, especially when compared to the roughly $15 per device licensing that Microsoft is believed to charge manufacturers for its Windows Phone licenses. Still, any claim of free and open source certainly comes with an asterisk attached. Now, coming up, the few, the proud, the machines. A U.S. general says some soldiers could be replaced by robots in the near future. And next, Grant Gross joins us to explain some stunning conclusions reached by the president's Privacy Oversight Board. But first, this episode is brought to you by 99designs. 99designs makes it easy to get a design that you love. The online platform connects creative entrepreneurs like you with a community of over 270,000 graphic designers. Whether you're looking for a new logo, responsive website, stationery, or t-shirt, there's a designer at 99designs that can bring your idea to life. What if you could start your next design project today and have dozens of designers to choose from in just a few days? Well, you can. That's 99designs. Selection, speed, and creativity are just a few of the benefits of having several designers work on your design project instead of just one. When you launch a design contest, you'll get plenty of creative ideas, give the designers feedback, and end up with a perfect design within a week. The process is fun, fast, and 100% satisfaction guaranteed. You can start your next graphic design project for as low as $199. Visit 99designs.com slash TN2 and get a $99 power pack of services for free. A power pack gives you more designer time and attention. 99designs will bold, highlight, and feature your design project in 99designs Marketplace, and you'll get nearly twice as many designs. Visit 99designs.com slash TN2, and we thank 99designs for their support of Tech News Tonight. All right, so the Privacy and Civil Liberties Oversight Board presented their 238-page report on NSA surveillance today in a special meeting. The board was created by Congress a, a decade ago to advise the president on how to protect the privacy of citizens in the war on terror. The board's key findings were that NSA phone surveillance doesn't work very well. It's illegal, and it might be unconstitutional. Wow, that's big news. Well, joining us is Grant Gross, the Washington correspondent for the IDG News Service, who is at the meeting. Welcome, Grant. Well, thanks. Um, what was the most surprising thing to come out of this meeting, would you say? 
I think one of the things you already mentioned that um, the majority of the board uh, thought that the um, phone records program that the NSA currently has is illegal, that it's not um, supported by the Patriot Act um, that that um, they've been using to to uh, support it. Why would you say, uh, why, why do they say actually, that the harvesting of this metadata isn't very effective? Why would they say that? Um, th they don't see a lot of evidence that um, the program on its own has, has uh, done much to prevent terrorism. There isn't much evidence out there that other, other things wouldn't work just as well, if not better. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, we, we've been hearing the word illegal a lot and associated with this. Why would they actually call it illegal? Uh, they looked at the wording of the that portion of the Patriot Act. They said um, it doesn't meet the standard of relevance that collecting phone records in bulk isn't isn't relevant to an ongoing FBI investigation, which the uh, statute requires it to be. And, and so that was kind of the main uh, issue with the, the legality of the program. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, I guess the big question here is uh, n none of this means anything if, it's, if it doesn't change anything. Do you expect the report to change how the NSA conducts its surveillance? It'll put some pressure on uh, the, the president and Congress to make some changes. Um, the, the board on its own can't make changes. And so I, it just kind of leads to a growing, uh, adds to a growing list of people who have, are calling for changes to that program. Awesome. Well, you can find more of Grant's work at IDG News Service. Grant, thank you so much for joining us today with this news. Thank you. Absolutely. And finally, a U.S. general says that as the Army shrinks over the coming decades, robot soldiers will pick up the slack. General Robo Robert, <laughs> robot, I almost said, Robert Cohn said that Army brigades, which currently have about 4,000 soldiers each, could soon include 3,000 humans and the rest robots and unmanned platforms. In fact, some 3,500 robots are currently deployed in Afghanistan. But one problem, the most promising military robot company, that's Boston Dynamics, was recently acquired by Google. That company dominated the Pentagon's recent DARPA Robotics Challenge, a contest to test military robots. Now, Google has said that it won't sign new military contracts. And now, Popular Science is reporting a rumor that Google won't even enter Boston Dynamics in the Robotics Challenge this year. Looks like Skynet will be delayed. I know, pretty sad news. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. If you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe to this podcast at twit.tv slash TN2. Our next newscast is tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Pacific. Hope to see you then. I'm Jason Howell. Good night. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.